Tonight, the CBC's chief correspondent, Peter Mansbridge, will moderate the last in a series of town hall meetings called The National in Conversation, the event at the Barbara from Atrium in Toronto, sees our foreign correspondents join Peter for discussion about the challenges and the rewards of what they do and why foreign coverage matters. This is Michael McClare reporting to CBC News from Havana. Terry Malevsky, CBC News, on the Honduras-Nicaragua border. As I stand, uh, the crowd is dragging the broken head of uh, this statue. And the prospect of a ceasefire between Hezbollah and Israel seems as bleak today as ever. Nalayed, CBC News, Beirut. But the desert is slow to give the secrets up, a perfect place to plot and hide. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Nouakchott, Mauritania. Each time a flight passes, they're dropping enough food to feed 1,500 people for one month. Sasha Petrosek, CBC News, Pyongyang. And the CBC's chief correspondent, Peter Mansbridge, has done his share of foreign reporting. And as I mentioned, he's going to moderate tonight's town hall, and he joins me now. And he wrote a piece that I read earlier today where you make that argument, and it's, a, it's an interesting argument that... Um, foreign coverage matters now more than ever. It why, does. Why do you it, say that? It, and when you look back at some yeah. of those, uh, you know, Michael McClear back, the guy who kind of was first into North Vietnam during the Vietnamese uh, war and the incredible journalism that he did, and going back to that day and all the great CBC foreign correspondents since. Listen, we live in a complicated world mm -hmm. right now where there are lots of different tensions at play, and the more we understand them, the better informed we'll be about them and the better we will be to try and understand and perhaps help in the solving of them. But you can't do that from a distance. You can't sit here and write the stories about, uh, about international uh, issues. You best are able to do that if you're actually there. And that's mm -hmm. what our correspondents are, are doing, as McClear did in his day. You see Nala Ayed and Margaret Evans and Sasha Petrosik out at the story, talking with the people who are making these things happen. All right, let's contrast that because in your blog you talk about, well, actually, why don't I get you to talk about <laughs> how you were in Versailles and you were covering a G7 and then there were so many things happening around the world. And so tell there, us about it, that. It was that, an unusual time. It yeah. was 1982. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in those days, we used to, you know, we just passed the G7 last, last weekend in Italy. But in those days, we used to do a, a big news special around each G7 conference because they, they were huge. They were the biggest uh, meetings of that era. And that particular time, 1982, you had Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and Francois Mitterrand, Pierre Trudeau and others who were the power players in the world at that mm -hmm. particular point. And we had a lot of things going on that summer. You had the Falklands War. You had uh, Israel invading Lebanon. You had a, a recession. Um, you had the Cold War perhaps at its peak. I mean, there were a lot of things going on. We had uh, half a dozen of our correspondents there uh, taking part in our coverage of that issue. But once the summit ended, we had to decide where everyone was going to go. Mm -hmm. And because there were so many things happening, the invasion of Lebanon had happened that weekend, that we literally drew names out of a hat as to who would go where. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Brian Stewart went off to uh, Buenos Aires, and Joe Schlesinger went to Washington, and, and uh, uh, David Halton followed uh, Trudeau to Austria, and Mike Duffy went, mm -hmm. to, uh, went to the border between Israel and Lebanon. I got, the, I ended up with London, so I didn't have that far to go, but uh, Reagan was going there on his first state visit to, to uh, Britain since his election. But it, it was a strange kind of situation well, for a number of reasons. One, how we decided, you never do that now. Yeah. Then we made it strictly editorial uh, reasoning, but budgets have entered the play for all networks and all news organizations and you know other things enter the, uh, enter the decision-making process now. But all those names I lifted off, listed off to you, all men, right? right. Never see that again. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, for, for good reason. Uh, especially, you know, now when you consider who our frontline foreign correspondents are who are doing most of these stories, yeah. the majority of them are women. All right, let's just, just for fun, because I know you love seeing these uh, old, old <laughs> clips, right? So let's just show a little clip from that back in 1982. They're still seething today over America's switch from support for London to abstention. Tomorrow, Reagan will try to ease the tension when he becomes the first American president to address British parliamentarians here at Westminster. But many of them are still upset. 
So it seems that no matter how warm their reception will be for him tomorrow, it would have been a lot warmer if Friday's vote change hadn't happened. Peter Mansbridge, CBC News, London. Yes, that was a long time ago, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what though, you know, so technology is different, resources mm. different. Like, t tell me about, you know, about those challenges and budgets with, you know, right. different media organizations coming back, some in the States, like Washington Post, New York Times, they're investing, but. Sure, and, and, uh, and they're doing, you know, for all the talk about fake news that uh, mm -hmm. has been leveled at them by the U.S. president, their circulation's up, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're making money now in a, in a way they weren't a, a year ago. Listen, it still comes down to whether, no matter what the money is, no matter how far uh, one has to travel to tell international stories, it still comes down to the journalism. Mm -hmm. And when you see the array of correspondents we have, some of whom will be taking part in this uh, town hall tonight, these are the, some of the best storytellers in the world. Yeah. And when you're dealing with stories like Margaret Evans just got back from South Sudan, the horrible uh, situation there in terms of uh, famine and starvation, um, uh, Nala Ayed in her various travels of, uh, uh, across mm -hmm. uh, Europe chasing the uh, refugees who are mm -hmm. fleeing Syria trying to find uh, new homes and being in Manchester last week. Uh, you know, all these stories um, need great storytellers mm -hmm. and we're so lucky to have them we'll you know we'll worry about the uh the money situation uh, mm -hmm. we'll let the accountants worry about that our journalists get to these places they tell stories uh, that make a difference and, and inform us all all right peter thank you all right Andrew. cbc news chief correspondent peter mansbridge and you can take part in the conversation with cbc foreign correspondents tonight it's at the cbc broadcasting center in toronto and open to the public people will be able to ask questions both in person and online. You can watch the live stream on cbcnews.ca or on the, face, on the CBC News Facebook and YouTube pages. That's tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern.